Howdy folks, welcome back to Boondockery. It's a very rainy day today, so I decided to spend a little time at Bushcraft Laboratory and make up a great big batch of fire starters. Here are the items I'm going to be using today to make my huge batch of fire starters. I've got cotton rounds, which you find in the cosmetics section of any store, and they're simply um, circular pads of cotton, 100% cotton. They need to be 100% cotton. You need Vaseline. Just a, either you can use paraffin or I use a whole bunch of old used candles because I'm going to do a combination of petroleum jelly and wax to make my fire starting fuel that's going to be embedded or engorged in the cotton rounds. And I like to use an old crock pot to melt all this stuff together. I picked this up at a yard sale for like five bucks but several years ago and I've done many many batches of fire starters in this and you'll need something to lay your uh, fire starters on when you're uh, making them so that way you don't make a huge mess and you can use tongs or something like that I'm just going to use an old pair of chopsticks and that way I can pick up the uh, cotton rounds dip them in my mixture of uh, petroleum jelly and wax and lay them out onto the cardboard. Now before we get into this, <laughs> I want to tell you that the reason I have so many of these items is because we had a local dollar store that was remodeling and they were selling their whole inventory for 75% off. And <laughs> They're, they're cheap anyway. All those things are inexpensive, but if I can get them 75% off, I went ahead and bought everything they had. There wasn't much left on the shelf, but I bought everything they had, and this is going to set me up for probably a three-year supply of fire starters. As I said, I'm using an old crock pot to uh, melt my ingredients. You don't have to do that. If you have an old tin can and a great big pot, all you need to do is put all of your ingredients, your uh, petroleum jelly, your wax, in the coffee can, put it in uh, the pot, fill the pot half full of water, and bring it to a boil. What's going to happen is that heat's going to indirectly transfer to those ingredients through the heat on the outside of the coffee can, and it will melt everything. Best thing about that, you don't have to clean it up, you can throw it away, or you can save it for the next time that you want to make fire starters. The one thing you do not want to do is to put your petroleum jelly and your wax into a coffee can or a pot or anything else and expose it to direct heat. What you're going to have is some serious smoking and the very real threat of a really big fire. Especially if you're doing this with a double boiler technique. You're going to want to break your old candles or your wax into small pieces. And the reason you want to do that is it will melt faster. However, if you are using an old crock pot, it doesn't really matter. If you have the time to wait, just go ahead and put a big old chunk in there. After a period of time, everything will melt and blend together. If you've got other things you need to be doing, Go ahead and do that technique. You don't have to bust them all up. Uh, if you do wind up breaking this up, keep in mind, it's going to be really messy. So you might want to do that chore outside. It's starting to rain again, and because it's so muggy, I have the laboratory's bay doors open. So you're going to hear some uh, road traffic, and you're probably going to hear the rain. Hopefully, I'll be able to come through with no problem. When I create my mixture that I'm going to be dipping uh, the cotton pads in. I use wax and petroleum jelly. The ratio that I use is usually three of the this size container to about the same amount of mass as this jar of wax. When you're preparing your candles, make certain that you remove the little metal thing out of there don't worry about the wick. The wick is going to melt. Nothing's going to happen to the wick. It's just going to be in the bottom of whatever vessel you decide to melt these mixtures down in. When you're finished using them, you can pick them out, throw them away, or leave them there. It doesn't matter. That's 
the ratio that I use uh, for my petroleum jelly and wax mixture. And the reason that there is so much petroleum jelly in there versus the wax is if you try to go with a 50-50 mix or you know anything like that, you're going to have a basically a candle. It's, it's going to solidify um, hard. And we don't, we don't want that. We want it to be pliable, we want it to be moist, so that way you can loosen up some of the fibers and to be able to get that flame going through them. The other technique that I use, I'll show you here, here in a few, but we're only actually gonna be dipping half of these pads. That's also going to help ensure that we have a nice fluffy uh, bit of cotton to be able to catch those sparks or to catch a flame, whichever lighting technique you decide to use. Just for a visualization of this ratio, that amount of petroleum jelly is what I would use to the relative amount of wax that I have sitting beside it. Because I have plenty of time to do this, I'm in no hurry. I'm just going to use the old technique of just putting the big old lumps of uh, candle wax in there and then gradually start adding my petroleum jelly. If you can put this inside your automobile, <laughs> I know that sounds weird, and the sun's uh, heating directly on it, it's gonna soften this up quite a bit, and it will come out of the jars much more easily. I'm just using a popsicle stick to work this out. And I'm going to set the, the jars, the petroleum jelly jars, aside once I get the bulk of these out. And I can go back in later and scrape out more once everything has really started to melt and blend really well. And the reason I'm using the popsicle sticks, they're disposable and I have tons of them here and it's just less things that you have to clean up when you're finished with this little project. It just uh, saves a little bit on the mess, saves a little bit on the, on the cleanup, and it actually does a pretty dang dang good job of getting all of the petroleum jelly out. Now I have all the ingredients already in the uh, crock pot. And it's going to gradually melt down over a period of time. I'm going to put the lid on it so it will melt down faster. I went a little light on the candles. Because the thing is, you can always add more wax into the mix. But once it's melted, you can't take it out. Now, after a short period of time, all of the wax and the petroleum jelly. There is a couple of fragments of wax still floating around in there, but for the most part, it is melted and ready to test. Just a quick look to see all the empty <laughs> petroleum jelly containers that are left over after that batch. Since all this is completely melted right now, I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off for now, because that will stay melted for quite some time so it's completely shut off now first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to test the quality of the mix what i want to do is i'm going to have one of the cotton pads down and one i'm going to use my chopsticks go ahead and dip one of these into the mixture and it, it's going to completely absorb it's going to completely absorb um, the liquid it's going to be engorged completely it's not like um, making uh, cotton ball vaseline fire starters so i'm going to get the excess off of there and i'm just going to lay that on top of the one that was not dipped and I'm going to let that set for a minute or two and let it cool, and then I'm going to check it. Now what I'm looking for is two things, one of which is a firmness with a little bit of flexibility, and I have that. It feels it's firm, but the other thing what I needed to have happen 
is it needed to be liquidy enough or fluid enough to be able to absorb into the bare cotton pad as well. And it soaked through. And the reason I'm doing this is because with each of these layers that I build up, I need to have these sort of stuck together to where I fluff up that cotton and it's going to be able to catch the spark. The other thing that needs to happen is if I need to, I can loosen the fibers and they will also ignite. That mixture is perfect. I don't have to add any more uh, wax to it. And I'm going to go ahead and start production. Well, this is everything set up, ready to go into full production. Now I've finished everything up and now I have 500 individual fire starters. I have 100 stacks of five. I think this might last me a few weeks. <laughs> now I'm going to show you exactly how well these things work. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the fire starters I made. I'm just going to loosen up those fibers a little bit. Just a little bit. Maybe pull it apart. Let some of those fibers get exposed there. Yeah, here was another one. It was stuck to it. We're just good. And pull those out and sort of stick them up. I don't want to manipulate the actual loose fibers. I just want to manipulate the area that's all nice and fuzzy. I'm just going to use my brother's bushcraft knife and a ferro rod. Bingo! Folks, I thought some of you might be interested in this. I just did a test burn of these. And one of these little fire starters burned for 7 minutes and 57 seconds. Now that was a good strong burn. It was still burning, but just not intensely enough to where I thought that it would be capable of sustaining fire. It still burned for about another minute, minute and a half, but a very low flame. So seven minutes, 57 seconds for one of these. I think that's fantastic. I just wanted to show everyone this neat little trick. It's using novelty uh, party candles. And these candles are the kind that you blow them out and they magically restart. These things are absolutely fantastic to use in addition to a fire starter in order to make certain that you have a good consistent flame even in high winds. Let me show you how it works. I'm just going to take one of the fire starters that I made and I am going to just pinch that right around there get those fibers in there and roll that around and I'm basically extending the candle let's take a lighter and in just a second it will sort of sparkle a little bit yeah got a little bit of that going on right now and I'm going to try blowing it out And if the advertising works, it's supposed to reignite. Let's try it again. Maybe it just weren't burnt down far enough. Still see the sparks coming off of it. That's supposed to be the key. Try blowing it out again. Nope. Yep, there we go. There we go. Try it again. And it reignites. 
So you, the, the key to this is make sure that you burn the wick down to where it reaches the uh, wax. Uh, and then at that point you can stick it in your fire and have it ready to roll. That'll continue to burn all the way down through the fire starter. And if you have high winds, this should be the trick of being able to get it lit and then walk away. Well folks, I hope you found this information helpful. These are absolutely phenomenal fire starters. I think that they will rival just about anything that you find on the market that you have to purchase from a store. I sandwich each one of these between a dry cotton, cotton uh, pad just so they can retain some of that fuzz on there. These things by themselves, once you've dipped them in there, they can be damp, they can be wet. Just dry them off, loosen up those fibers, and you've got fire. Very economic and very easy to do. Of course, you may not want to make 500 at a time. You could make, you know, 50. And that'll last you for a while. Uh, one of these fire starters, just that right there, is sufficient to get a good fire going as long as you make certain you collect the proper fuel. Make sure you have good dry uh, twigs. Make certain that you have everything assembled and ready for you to build onto that fire once you light one of these fire starters and you shouldn't have any problem. Well folks, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.